There can be only one. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. All out of bubblegum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. I'm too old for this shit. I can't believe that just fucking happened. Groovy. Good evening. Welcome to Cinema Royale, where we chew bubblegum and talk about movies. I'm Mr. White, also known as Mike Mixtape. Along with me are my f- official film aficionados of the night. First up, we got Mr. Orange himself, Matt Brunet, also known as Animat. Hey, guys. It's getting cold over here. I just came back from vacation. Already, I need more sweaters. I miss the sun. I miss the heat. Where did you go, Matt? I went to uh, the Dominican Republic, Punta Cana. Ooh. Mostly just uh, relaxing by the beach and just tanning and all that stuff. Nice, nice. And let's not forget our other co-host of the night, James Sullivan, also known as Jaime Tude, and he's Mr. Pink of the night. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by sleeping for nearly 12 hours straight and waking up to find out that you're part of a class action lawsuit. <laughs> what? Or at least you're invited. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, as you may know of the title of the, this video and or heard it from the last episode, we're talking about Die Hard clones. Movies that kind of copy, clone the formula of the Die Hard movies taken from a one situation in one place at the wrong time, blah, blah, blah. But before we get into that, I want to mention something that happened today, and I can't believe we've done this second time in a row. Somebody died mm-hmm. recently. What a acclaimed, oh, right. acclaimed actor and director, Harold Ramis, died today. Ah, <sighs> you may know him as for his work with Ghostbusters, Caddyshack, Stripes, all that good stuff. Uh, Groundhog Day, which. Uh, it's not particularly a classic favorite of mine, but someone someone out there likes it. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's kind of uh, important in stuff. Yeah. When I... The, the thing about Harold Ramis is that when I think... Um, when I think about... When I think about Ghostbusters, I do not... Uh, I do not immediately jump to Bill Murray or Dan Aykroyd. Why? Because after after uh, after that 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 whole uh, fanaticism was done with um, back in the 80s, even sometime in the 90s, um, they had other stuff to do with their careers. They were they were still uh, fairly prominent. Although Although Aykroyd, I still, I still sort of associated him with, but mainly, uh, I associated Ramus with Ghostbusters. That's the guy, Egon Spengler, uh, is uh, the image that comes to mind when I think of Ghostbusters. And I don't know, maybe it's the maybe it's the glasses, maybe it's that big hair. Uh, that just sort of stands out about his character, but it, he embodied it for me, at least. Yeah, Ghostbusters is definitely Ghostbusters. one of my top favorite movies of the '80s, and Egon. I mean, he was the man. He was a smart guy, you know. And you know, his Twinkie line in the movie was the best, to say the least. Explaining. How he explains stuff. The Twinkie. Big. Shuma. <laughs> how does that part go again? <laughs> I'm not explaining it. Isn't he Cana- wasn't he Canadian, Matt? <laughs> uh, Harold Ramis? No, actually. I'm 100% sure. No, he was born in Chicago. Oh. He's Chicago, from Chicago, so... 
Oh, yeah. my bad. Well, now you know. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and we also but, lost... Uh, mm, uh, just want to add about Harold Ramis that I, I am pretty shocked that Harold Ramis actually died pretty soon, honestly, because, like, Ghostbusters is one of those... It's one of the it was one of those big icons of like the late eighties and early nineties and stuff like that. And just hearing that apparently he just passed like uh, someone from the ghostbusters has passed away. Like Harold Ramis, that actually kind of surprises me because this is definitely, this is definitely something that happened a little too soon. I'll admit it, so yeah, like I haven't grew n- grown up too much on the Ghostbusters, but I will agree that Harold Ramis's death is a little too soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he had some rare, rare condition. Yeah, it was he had this disease he was fighting for quite some time, and it finally caught up with him. Um. I don't even if uh, I don't even know if I can pronounce it. Oh God! Here I am, here I am, uh, uh, trying to figure out what uh, Harold Ramis died of, and I'm getting. I, I type in Harold Ramis died of, and it says a blogging accident. <laughs> oh, a heroin what? overdose. Oh God! Well, wait. If you you, let's you see. people are fucking joking about this guy dying already. Yeah, these, these a blogging things. accident. Oh god, he's a blogging. Said? Yeah, a blogging accident. People are so sick these days. Uh, that would be like tell me about it. The internet it can be a cruel, cruel place. Um. Autoimmune inflammatory vasculitis. There you go. I was just going to say that, but thank you for saying that. Yes, that's what he died of. Ouch. Yeah. It sounds technical. Well, because he lost the ability to walk because of it. But after relearning to do so, he suffered a relapse of this disease in late 2011, and then all of a sudden... Gone. Mm-hmm. I figured we mentioned that, because today it happened... We're doing it today. It's a good tribute to him. Yep. And uh, let's also and not forget... And he died hard uh, ripoffs that Harold Ramis did? No. Aw. <laughs> uh, um, we also almost forgot to mention uh, America's sweetheart, um, uh, Shirley Temple, who passed away since the last time we did a blog. Yeah. Shirley Temple. Podcast. And... Shirley oh, Temple yes, and... Yes, uh, yes, yes. yes. And uh, Sid Caesar too. Let's not forget Sid Caesar. Oh yes, Coach Calhoun. Yep. I'll always remember him as Coach Calhoun. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, moving forward. Let's move Mm -hmm. forward. Uh, As I mentioned, of course, people want to emulate the Die Hard because it was such a big thing, and you know, you take. A concept like Die Hard, you know, one situation, you know, when somebody's got to say something, blah, blah, blah. And you get these clones, you know. And I found this list, actually, from IGN.com. Uh, IGN is not the greatest source. I don't like it. But this list was actually pr- quite interesting. They have 21, well, 20, 20 films they listed from worst to, to the best. So, and then... There's not not all these are. They left out a couple that I kind of thought of off the top of my head, like for example, they left out um, uh, Paul Blart Mall Cop, which was Die Hard set mm-hmm. at the mall. Oh Jesus. Um. That's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. That's the one they didn't mention. Um, that was the first one that came off my head. Um. I, I could come up with a few of them. Uh, but you've probably not heard of them. Well, let's let's try. Uh, let's try. Let's try, James. Um, don't tell me you've seen Three Ninjas High Noon at Mega Mountain. No, I no. haven't. I haven't. But apparently, it's Die Hard in a theme park. 
Top Haven't park. you always wanted to see Die Hard at a, at a theme park? <laughs> yeah, I just like... Also, not starring any of the three original ninjas. So, But, but it has Hulk Hogan, brother, in it. Go to the theme but park, not... yeah. brother. But actually, die... imagine Die Hard at Disneyland or something like that. That would be amazing. That would be. <laughs> yes, you're right, Matt. You should make that. E? <laughs> yes. You and some jerk with the camera. You're the animation buff, he's the theme park buff. You guys you guys come together, make Die Hard at Disneyland. Yeah, just do an independent film. Mm-hmm. Eh, okay. I'm sure we could do I'm sure we could do something better than um, Escape from Tomorrow. <laughs> because during during my vacation I actually decided to check it out just to see what it is. Oh my Jesus. <laughs> but that'll be for another day. That would be. Mm hmm. Honestly, I've not even I've seen like a couple of these, so I can't give you my sources of whether I like it or not, so but the concepts are interesting enough. Mm. Okay. Well, can we start off with maybe a few that are not quite on the list yet? Go ahead. Shoot. Okay. First off, we have Meltdown starring Jackie Ch- uh, no, Jet Li and Jackie Chung. Um, in this film, uh, uh, Jet Li is a, a stunt double who was uh, formerly a police officer who gets, uh, uh, who's invited to a party for a film that he's, uh, that he's actually, uh, a stunt double in, and, uh, uh, when sudden phone calls start coming up that he, that he remembers from a terrorist who blew up his son in a bus, uh, he has to stop, hesitate, and think, you know, maybe there's something wrong here. And next thing you know, terrorists take over the building. What, what are you surprised about? Well, this film actually does have something unique to offer. Uh, uh, other than the fact that um, it has Jet Li in it, uh, this is one of the first, this is one of the uh, scenarios where you see the fight choreography mainly geared towards not Kung Fu, but more like uh, Gun Fu. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've heard of that. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, the, act- the one who ends up stealing the show as far as the Kung Fu is... Uh, is concerned is Jackie Chung, not to be confused with Jackie Chan, as I almost did. Um, uh, who plays a washed up movie star who, uh, in the end, uh, one of the terrorists decides he wants to fight the, the action hero. So he puts on, he has Jackie Chung put on a movie suit, and guess what it is? You're not going to guess. Hmm. A, wait, a movie it's, suit? Yes. Hmm, what... There is a... A certain kung fu movie legend who was always attributed to this. They always pay tribute to him with this particular type of suit. They did it in Kill Bill. Oh, They've Bruce done Lee? It in Tekken games. Yes. They have Jackie Chung dragging dressing up in the yellow tracksuit from... Uh, You're kidding. No. Wow. That's iconic. Wow. From Game of Death. So <laughs> there you go. Wow. Um, so that's one... That's one uh, diehard knockoff that's out of the way. Is it worth it? Actually, if you want, uh, if you want uh, Die Hard with Gung Fu, Gun Fu, I say it's worth a look. 
uh, don't uh, don't expect uh, uh, too much payoff with the villain though at the end. It's a that's that's the only setback is that you can't uh, you can't top falling off of a building. Anyone else want to want to take a shot? <laughs> uh, on that, uh, I honestly don't know what to say on that. <laughs> well, actually, I'm reading the wiki, wiki on it, and uh, it's a it's actually a parody. Well, it's a, it's a comedy, so it's a parody on action films like Die Hard and Speed, and they're, they gain controversy because. It, it was spoofing Jackie Chan, which you got confused for. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I didn't really get much comedy out of it. I think I got more comedy. Well, I, uh, the Jackie Chan character is is comical. I can, so yeah. I mean, of course it's going to be like a parrot. Well, of course, with a name like Jack. Yeah, Jackie Chung. It's got to be a total they parody of the character. Yeah. And um, the in the U.S. But that's his actual stage name. Yeah, I know. So it's just, it just you know, it's just I irony, I guess. I ironic is name is kind of the same as Jackie Chan or Jack. Ah, I'm not. <laughs> ah whatever. But uh, if you're in the United States, it's called Meltdown. But the original title is called High Risk. So if you're out of the out of the states, it's called High Risk. A nice and generic. Mm. Well, so is Meltdown, but yet, yeah, what was up with that title? It has nothing to do with like a, a nuclear meltdown or anything. Who's melting down? <laughs> exactly. I was just thinking. I was like, who had this meltdown? Like, uh, God damn it! Fucking piece of shit! Oh my gosh! Maybe the person yeah, who hates the movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, mo- yeah. There's nobody having like a a, a crisis or a a meltdown crisis in the film, a personal crisis. It's just, it's just something that sounded cool, so they slapped it on the, on the marquee. Yeah. Oh god, I'm having trouble thinking of a movie out top of my head. So I just recently heard something about a movie saying it's a Die Hard on up, and I just thought of it and I just lost it. Damn, I hate those days. Was it with uh, uh, Guaygon Jin in it? Not that I know. What are you? What's the movie you're thinking of? What movie are you thinking of, James? An upcoming film starring Liam Neeson. Uh, called. Let me pull it up here. Do 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 do. I could just say it right now, nonstop. A taken movie. Nonstop. Yes. I was. Oh, no. Yes. It's an upcoming movie from Liam Neeson, and it's just basically Die Hard on a Plane. Mm-hmm. Which has actually been done. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just saw a commercial for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when you think about it, technically it has not been on a plane plane, because Die Hard 2 was taking place at an airport. Mm-hmm. So well, technically, so it's, well, technically, Mr. Falcon was on a plane in Die Hard 2. <laughs> <laughs> but there was, yeah. So it takes place on a plane. So it's, it's just all action on the plane and basically nonstop, as we know of so far, based on the trailer and the information. It's just this guy texts Liam Neeson. He's like a marshal or something. He texts him like, I'm going to kill a passenger every 20 minutes. And he, you hear some guys like, how, how, how does somebody kill somebody on the plane without getting noticed? And just you might get intrigued about it. I'm intrigued about it. I might go see it. You know what that Maybe. actually... I don't know if... Um, that actually sounds a bit familiar that sounds, I don't know if about you, but it sounds a bit like um, uh, taking uh, fair height one, two, three, or something like that. Taking fair height. 
Yeah. You know, the one that it has a remake with, I think, Jamie Foxx and John John Travolta. <laughs> and they're on a train. You know? I, I, uh, oh. It, it, it has one. It has taking Point. and one, two, three in the title. That I know. Point blank. Take, take it a Pelham, one, two, three. I think. Oh, the taking yeah. of Pelham, one, two, three. That's what that's because you're. Yeah. Just, yeah, I. It could. It could sound. Yeah. Wait. I can. I can sort of see that situation. Well, first off, we have to think of. I think uh, we have to say to ourselves, what makes the Die Hard formula? Yes. Yes. Is it, it's a specific that. It's so the one thing that we forgot. We should have said that at the, at the beginning of the episode. We, what makes the die formula? Oh yeah, we totally forgot. Let's yeah. just let's get into that before actually talking about more films. Because mm-hmm. what makes what what is the Die Hard element? What makes it Die Hard? What's the element that they can clone it into another film? Hmm. Well, you have to have a hostage situation in an enclosed space preferably with uh, uh, one character who's who's very vulnerable who's very mortal uh, being sold as the only as the only uh, character that can save them that's my that's my take on it kind of like a I was thinking more like some kind of badass person. Or someone who used to be badass, just like, stu- who just happens to be there. It's not like mm-hmm. he wants to go there because something happened. It's just like he got himself into a pickle, per se. Precisely. Yeah, those two actually sum it up pretty well. And with that formula. We've got quite a bit of clones that want to be die hard, but quite not close. I'm just looking over the list 10,000 times here just to figure out which one to talk about. And as we just mentioned nonstop with Leon Neeson coming up soon in theaters, there was another one that's been on a plane before. Mm-hmm. And it's called Passenger 57, starring Wesley Snipes. Hmm. Let's see, what's our summary here? Wesley Snipes claims you should always bet on black in this aviation thriller. Acceptable device when he's in a terrorist situation, not so much when he's on the roulette table. Notable for Liz Hurley's villain... And a few neat ass kickings. Sadly, Snipes was denied a sequel, Passenger 58. Always still bled on black. Quote unquote um, from IGN himself. Um, uh, I think you. I think you should change it to always still bet on Blade. <laughs> yeah, this film. I don't know. I've heard about it. It apparently gave Wesley Snipes his credentials as a popular action hero icon. And of course, the famous line, always bet on black. (laughs) Which... I've never... Oops, go on. No, go on. I wasn't going to say anything. I've honestly never really heard of Passenger 57... Maybe at one point it, it it was on TV, but I don't know. I, I don't really I never. remember that much of like a Die Hard esque anything. Like the closest thing that I know of a Die Hard style plane movie would would pretty much be the plane. But even though people remember more about the snake the snakes than anything. It kind of is a bit of a diehard movie, if you think about it. I mean, it's 
Sammy Well or I don't know, wait, maybe yes, no, wait, no. No, maybe not, because <laughs> Samuel Jackson is there to protect the kid. So he is doing his job. He didn't get himself in that situation. He's doing it to protect the kid. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Well, that was I quick. just wasted minutes on this podcast. You just wasted somebody's time with that statement. I don't know. <laughs> well, well, I don't know. It's just... I don't know what to say about Passenger 57. <laughs> Me either. I just mentioned it for conversation points. I'm just going through. Because, all right, just mind you, this list from IGN. These, these are the most random, off-the-cut, non-popular and popular films that are die are clones. I may have not seen them. So, yeah, I didn't do my research. Oh, well. Yeah. But there is one that... Well, like- I've seen. If I may add, it is um, Olympus Has Fallen. This is one of the big popular ones, like one of the big Hollywood ones. Yes, yes. Where initially they put they put the stakes godforsaken high on this one. I mean, this is literally this is literally like presidential high. It's pretty much this uh, instead of Bruce Willis played by Gerard Butler. Who used to be like um, a C, like an FBI agent <coughs> that protects the president, and now like years later he's like re- like fired or retired, he, like he quit or something, and then suddenly terrorists come in from North Korea or a Korea or something, yeah, from North Korea, taking over the White House and keeping the president. Keeping the president and all the people like hostage and stuff, and it's only Gerard Butler who has to go and save him. Funny you mention that, because that same year, another one came out called White House Down, and it started. Uh, yeah. It started Jamie Foxx and Channing Tatum, and it's pretty much the same premise to an, in a nutshell. I mean. Terrorists come in, it's in the White House, the president, they have to go fight the terrorists, blah, blah, blah. And I have not, I've actually have not seen these. I've heard about them, I've seen reviews, heard reviews, read reviews of them. And apparently, Olympus has fallen as a better movie over the White House down. Mm, I don't know. How did that. There, there's no. Based on reviews I've read, people Actor. are saying. There's no fun fact. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Like I said, it's like with Olympus has fallen. I just feel like it's as fun. Self kind of a little too seriously for the kind of movie it is. Plus the fact that they, it's a little bit annoying how super patriotic it it is like literally they don't take it as like just the president and some of the people in the white house have been taken uh have been taken hostage they're literally going with oh no america is in trouble america is in hostage who's going to save america america it just just reminds me of Die Hard Four. Like it definitely has. <laughs> oh man. Olympus has fallen. In moments where like the terrorists would just throw like would just throw away the American flag, and you just see like a close up of the flag thrown away or something like that, or. Mmm. Ah. Uh. They went. They went the same Raimi oh, route. Oh, oh, I shouldn't have said oh crap. Yeah, like they use that flag just to um, use it as, as like the grand symbol of America. Oh yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. They they try to make it so that the whole U.S. would blow up. That's the thing. Hmm. If you 
if they didn't give them what they want, uh, they ha- they would literally make all the missiles in the U.S. explode, and it would blow up America. Wow. <laughs> wow, we so, like, so, yeah, with all that, they kind of take themselves a little too seriously and a little too patriotically. So this is more of a U.S. I- I- it's more of a U.S. exclusive film. Like, if you're not in the U.S., you're just going to look at it and go, what the, what the hell is going on? What is this? Just like you did? Yeah, kind of. Because <laughs> it's like, what the heck's going on here? I'm not from America. I'm from Canada. <laughs> it's like, no, it's like everybody's just going to watch. It's like, oh, no, America is in trouble. Well, this is why I'm Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> now we just need to die hard in Canada. It's die hard, <laughs> die hard in, in Canada. Canada. <laughs> A. Uh, um, starring the McKenzie brothers. <laughs> who would invade Canada? Seriously. Why would they? Uh, I mean, they got pissed about the Olympics. Give us a good reason. (laughs) (laughs) How how dare you win at soccer? Hockey. Shit. Fuck. Yeah, you invade us. We're going to kick your ass with hockey sticks, man. (laughs) Oh, my God. Mm Mm-hmm. Trust me, there's a great bit with uh, with Craig Ferguson telling telling us that the Canadian Army shouldn't even use um, shouldn't use guns or tanks. We just give them all hockey sticks and tell them, "There you go, boys. The Taliban has the puck." <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> brilliant. Oh my gosh. Um. I can't believe we had, I can't believe I've not mentioned this film in the past because it has Nicolas Cage in it. What? Which one? The Rock. N- Nicolas Cage. Rock? Number two on the list. It's Die Hard well, in Prison. You know? Oh, in prison. In prison. Hands down, one of the best action movies ever made. The Rock is so good, you almost forgive the fact it kickstarted Nicolas Cage's career as an action hero. Counterbalanced by Sean Connery as a non sheerish mode and a non angrier, non angrier Ed Harrison. The Rock is pure high octane nirvana. You want to watch it right now, don't you? <laughs> Quote unquote from IGN. Uh, yes, I haven't forgotten this film. It's the it's the one that gave birth to the to the term Zeus's butthole. <laughs> what? Yep, this is where Nicolas Cage coins the phrase Zeus's butthole in this movie. I mean. How come I've not brought it up during the Nicolas Cage films and I didn't realize it until now? I was like, shit. This is one of the greatest, I mean, it's best one. Best Nicolas Cage film. I mean, Zeus's butthole. That's I, that's a line you, you don't get anywhere else in a film. That well, That is true. I mean... Who else is going to say Zeus... Like, if, some, if you hear the phrase Zeus's butthole... Who else is going to expect who is going to say that? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. No one but Nicolas Cage. Yeah. But yeah, Dyer in a Prison is actually an interesting concept. It's like you're at Alcatraz or some kind of prison and something happens with terrorists or, you know, a prison riot or something. And takes hostages, and you gotta do something. Yeah, um, I'd like to actually contest with the um, uh, with with this particular film. Um, 
Uh, earlier on, we, I believe we set up the formula as follows. A hostage situation, complete entrapment, a hero who's, uh, who's in the wrong place at the wrong time. This movie has everything except that last part. Oh, yeah, uh, not the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. Nicholas Cage and Sean Connery are hired to do what they're doing in the film. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Okay, but now I just look at the... I'm looking at the wiki of The Rock, and I just realized who directed this film. Who? Michael Bay. What? The Bayman? Yep. Michael Bay directed this. Well, this is one of his earlier films. I mean... Yeah, it is. It's 1996 for you, and that was... Just after... It's the second film, mind you, because that's before Armageddon, before Pearl Harbor, before Transformers... It's just after Bad Boys. Mm hmm. Wow, this is like before he snapped. Yeah, yeah it's just early career. Yeah, it's before you. you yeah. yeah. This is like his Bad Boy days and his. Playboy days? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he did a video. Okay, so he directed a Playboy video. Okay. <laughs> Didn't expect that. Oh my god. <laughs> you learn something new every day. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. Of course. Duh. I, I heard about that one. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. Other than that, yeah. <laughs> Just want to bring that up. Because. Although. Although, let's be honest, with Michael Bay, are we really surprised? No, I, mm. I, I don't know. Maybe. I'm, I'm surprised because I forgot about the, the Rock, directed by direct Michael Bay and featuring Nicolas Cage. I mean, Michael Bay and Nicolas... Well, I don't know. I don't know. This it's just... Oh, okay. Oh, the rock. Right. Oh, oh, I thought we meant the play. I thought we we're still on the Playboy thing. No. I talk about the. <laughs> I just said I know what you're talking about. I didn't want to elaborate on the Playboy because I'm not shocked about Playboy. Oh. oh, okay. It's it's pretty girls and explosions. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So, we've said enough about The Rock, or have we? Probably. Yeah. Do you got something else in okay. mind? Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> uh, check this one out. It's not on the list. Again. Okay. But it's one of the first most vivid and blatantly obvious, confessional even, Die Hard knockoffs that I ever saw. Click the link. <laughs> if you dare. Oh God. Oh God. I'm what did you? What did you find? What's in the Chris? bag? <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm ready. Christmas Rush. Starring Dean Cain, formerly of uh, the adventure, uh, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. Uh, Dean Cain in this TV movie, also known as Breakaway, plays a department store cop. A mall cop, if you will. <laughs> uh, who uh, 
whose uh, whose mall has been taken over by criminals who have kidnapped his wife. Now, gee whiz, there was another movie that used a mall and a mall cop as its uh, as its premise for its action movie, right, Mike? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right i mean it's like really <laughs> why mm-hmm. i mean okay christmas rush at the mall then you got paul blart mall cop it takes place at a mall <laughs> yes and and this I... one's a <laughs> and this one's no... a little bit closer to home though because it is it does take place on christmas oh of course yeah you, you got that trope of Die Hard, and you guess it's like, oh, we're gonna make a Die Hard club. Let's take place on Christmas as well. Besides the formula, oh my gosh, we've done it. We made the Die Hard movie we wanted, but made, but made for TV. And the best part how is, we they knew. Make it more high- how, how else are we? Die Hard. I got it. We put Christmas decorations up everywhere. Da-ding! Yeah, the um, here's yeah, here's uh, here's one thing that that you gotta know is that even in the uh, in the made-for-TV infomercials and advertisements that were for this film when it when it was first being showcased, uh, they very much said it was it was basically die die hard at a mall. So, what what else can you say? Well, here's a here's a nice little. Uh, here's a little nice little uh, p- bit of dialogue from the film. Uh, Dean Cain, uh, who at the time was not Superman, mind you, he was uh, he was hosting Ripley's Believe It or Not. So the choice to to cast him as the lead in a made-for-TV action film, I thought, was a little bit uh, of a surprise. Um, is fisticuffs with a terrorist. And, of course, there's an assault rifle between the two of them that they're struggling with. Um, Kane gets pinned up against the wall, and the, the terrorist said, says to him, Merry Christmas. Dean Kane says back to him, You too, smiling. <laughs> Christmas? Merry Christmas. You too. Right in the middle of the fight. Na, 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 na. Mm-hmm. How else would you react to that? I mean, it's like the spirit. <laughs> is, is, is it like to show the spirit of Christmas? Oh, my God. I just found the best quote from a movie. So, there's a character named Aurora, and San- and Santa Claus, the mall Santa's there. They get held up at gunpoint. Aurora says, Santa, help. And Santa's opening his flask for a drink. He's like, Santa, don't get paid to play Gladiator. <laughs> wait, wait, is that from this movie? Yes. Oh, well... Uh, Santa don't get paid to play gladiator. <laughs> oh my god, you don't pay it. Oh my god. Santa don't get paid to get paid, gladiator. <laughs> Since when do you ever see it's like, nope, I'm out of here. Screw this. <laughs> oh man. But I was going to say that Die Hard and a shopping mall has been done three times now. Mm, Christmas. What did we miss? 
Christmas Rush, Paul Blart Mall Cop, and there's one on the list that I found. It's called Point Blank. It takes place at a shopping mall, and it's got Mickey Rourke in the film. Hmm. He is uh, facing off against a group of escaped convicts who have taken over a shopping mall. And, uh, yeah. The third, um, freaking... Actually, this is... Pre- Wait, this is before Christmas Rush, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it was before Christmas Rush. Came out in 1998, and Christmas Rush came out in 2002. So, technically, this is the first shopping mall one. Christmas Rush was the second one, and Paul Blot Mario Kart was the third one. Mm-hmm. So, people... Although Paul Blart would be considered more as a comedy than anything. Oh, it, it is. Mean, the... It is. It is a comedy. But you can... Yeah. You can plainly see it's a diehard spoof, because it's at a mall. And the situation's suppose, at a mall, yeah. and, he, and he, it, it's all there. All of the, the elements of Die Hard is in Ball, Paul Bart. Uh, I can't even talk tonight. Oh, wow. Mall Cop. Paul Barf Mall Cop. <laughs> Blah. <laughs> well, it is. it is a Happy Madison movie, so, like, it is an appropriate title for it. But yeah, I mean, I I guess you know it's convenient for being taken over in the shopping mall because you got everything. You got a lot of area to cover. You've got everything you can grab in stores and use as weapons. I mean, it's prime. Mm-hmm. I mean, wow. Well, is point blank any good? Uh, uh, I thought it was okay. I mean, Mickey Rourke, you know, I mean, I think he's pretty good, but, you know, as uh, actually IGN explains his, he's McLean after a few dozen punches in the face. So, just have that mental image. Just like... Imagine Bruce Willis being being a dunce at times, and there you go. You got Mickey Rourke in Point Blank. That's what he mm. looks like. Um, of course. That's why they call it Point Blank, because that's where he's getting hit from a Point Blank range. Oh, my God. I was, I was just going to watch a trailer for one of these movies, and guess what the advertisement was? The nonstop trailer. Hmm. What? The nonstop oh, trailer. Oh yeah! What a coincidence! And it's a coincidence. Like I'm watching a trailer, and it's a trailer for another dire clone. <laughs> oh, God. Um, They're advertising on top of a trailer. Yeah. So it's a trailer advertising on another trailer from an old movie. <laughs> <laughs> My God! Wow. I mean, this. By the way. Um, Go ahead. By the way, what? A related note. There's something that I realized with this list that you gave, that you gave us. Yep. Go ahead. I don't know if you read how each and every single one starts out. Like, did, I don't know if you have noticed that. You mean how it mm. explains what it is, like each film. Yeah, pretty much. Like, it's Die Hard in a sports stadium. It's Die Hard at a rock concert. It's Die Hard on a train. It's Die Hard in a school. It's Die Hard in a. Well, you gotta explain. Never... You gotta explain. You it's gotta... Die. You gotta explain it somehow to the audience. I mean, you just can't say. That, you just you gotta that, explain you, just, it. you gotta explain it like that. I mean, you gotta explain it like that. Yeah, but it's like each and every single bloody one on this list. It's so it gets a little repetitive, you know. But I know I'm. A, I mean, yeah. I. I mean, like I said before, I'm not a huge fan of IGN, and I just their work is kind their of. Work. Eh, but 
I do agree. That's just kind of annoying. Like, really? Uh. Um, well, actually, speaking of movies that we have not mentioned in the past, uh, we did it. James and I did a Sylvester Stallone film uh, am, uh, uh, episode, and we didn't mention Cliffhanger, did we? No, I don't think we did. Think it's Die Hard on a Mountain. Well, here's here's where the uh, the formula is toyed with, quite obviously. I didn't, um, while watching Cliffhanger, I wouldn't have even dreamed of calling it a Die Hard knockoff. Apparently, I mean, according it's... to IGN, it's a Die Hard clone, but you can decipher it each way you want. Well, I've decided. I've made my independent decision that Christmas Rush and Nonstop are diehard clones as well. And guess what else I'm adding to the list? Snakes on the plane. It's diehard on a plane. Think about it. Didn't you not hear what Matt said about that? Yeah, was... did we just go through the entire Snakes on the Plane thing? Seriously. <laughs> I just I even set it up realizing a Die Hard ripoff. Oh, t- t- oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I- I'm so sorry, man. I'm is, sorry. I'm yeah, gonna... one of the big because one of the biggest concepts of being a Die Hard ripoff is that the big badass dude is not meant to be there. Samuel Jackson is. He's supposed to protect this one kid, and. The evil bad guy, the kid, just put snakes on his plane. <laughs> I just love that. I mean, come on, you were listening? I mean, oh my god, I'm going to replay that clip just for you guys who have not missed that earlier in the episode. Okay. The closest thing that I know of a die-hard style plane movie would would pretty much be a plane but even though people remember about the snake the snakes than anything it kind of is a bit of a die-hard movie if you think about it i mean it's samuel or i don't know wait maybe yes no wait no no maybe not because samuel jackson is there to protect the kid so he is doing his job he didn't get himself in that situation. He's doing it to protect the kid. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> well, that was I quick. just wasted minutes on this podcast. You just wasted somebody's time with that statement. Yeah, Snakes in a Plane, Matt's right about that. It's not really a diehard clone. But mind you, okay. mind you, this list is old. It's not, it's not current to 2014. This was written... September 20th, 2013. So, nonstop it won't be on the list, but the ones you mentioned before, uh, they probably missed it. Mm-hmm. So. <sighs> well, Cliffhanger, uh, what, what else is to be said about it? I don't know. Uh, yeah, we've... Apparently, IGN says, uh, one of Sly Stallone's best non-Rocky slash Rambo movies. Uh, John Lithgow is the villain he was born to play. Unforgettable set pieces. The opening fall is a real stomach churner. And one of the all-time greatest movie stunts as a team of criminals perform a mid-air plane transfer. Exhilarating. Mm-hmm. I got... I guess I gotta see that film. Oh, I saw, <sighs> it sounds so cool, time. man. I gotta check it out. <laughs> Last time I saw it was on television, and it was still awesome. So, there you go. All right, good. Check it out. Um... God, do I really want to state the most obvious Die Hard clone or should I just talk about the weirdest ones I've noticed? Hmm. Well, let's start with some of the weird. 
Because this list has a bunch of oddball dire clubs that I've never heard of. And the premise alone is just like, really? Like, da, 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 which one was I eyeballing? Uh, you got freaking, you got Terminal Rush. It's Die Hard at the Hoover Dam. Uh, what about a Terminal Christmas Rush? <laughs> you will not let that go. Okay, Terminal Rush, go on. So it has, of course, Roddy Piper. As... Roddy Roddy. Roddy, Roddy, Roddy Piper as the McLean of the story, and of course, back in the '90s, you had Don the Dragon Wilson for all his action films, and he's the villain in this film. Hmm. And boy, IGN has a very crappy summary of the film. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you so much, IGN. You suck. Uh, why? Do you happen to like the film? I mean, the premise alone is that the Hoover Dam is like, really? I wouldn't see that happening. I mean, why? Why would you make a movie about that? Why at the Hoover Dam? That just... It's just like... Unless you're kind of... uh, The only reason why you would do it at the Hoover Dam is like the villain wants to contaminate the whole city's water supply with some kind of poison that would kind of kill everybody off. But that's not the case in this one, apparently. They just terrorists... What is he trying to? Well, there's uh, Don the Dragon Wilson and his band of terrorists sees the Hoover Dam and threaten to blow it up if his demands are not met. So he wants to blow it up the dam. I'm like... Uh, blowing up the dam, sure, that's a good idea. You know, blow the dam, water comes up, psh, flood alert, flood alert. <laughs> oh, nice plan you got there. But then, uh... I don't know. Yeah, they just... Wanna re- they want to make anarchy? Cha- rain, rain chaos? Yeah, just the, the stupidest way possible. What's your incentive exactly to do this? <laughs> exactly, why... Well, you got some grudge against the Hoover Dam. You got some grudge against something like that. I mean, what's? I or it's mean... like, it's like step. All right, it's like blow up Hoover Dam. Yeah, blow up Hoover Dam plus question mark question mark question mark equals profit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's their idea. Yeah. Does he take hostages? Oh, but of course. I mean... Is Roddy, Roddy, Roddy Piper in the wrong place at the wrong time? Oh, yes. Oh, indeed. He's just minding his own business. All of a sudden, the band terrorists come into Hoover Dam and they're like, Oh, I gotta do some shit here. I gotta take some care of some action. <sighs> yeah, so there are civilians and dam workers as hostages. I mean, it's just, it just, it's like, at the Hoover Dam, blow up the Hoover Dam, it's just the stupidest thing I ever heard. It's just, it's like, the, the most mediocre villain could do that, it's like, ah. Ay, 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 ay. Oy ve. Well, let's take a look through the rest of these. Uh, the Under Siege films. I haven't seen that because I've never was a big... Steven Seagal? You're not a Steven yeah, Seagal fan. I've, well, I, I actually, I, I've honestly I have not seen them either. So. Yes, Under Siege, yes. you got Under Siege, which is Die Hard on a Boat. But he's just a cook. Steven Seagal says, underselling himself a little as he goes about single-handedly ridding his Navy battleship of Terra scumbags. You sunk my battleship. <laughs> oh, man. Gary Busey-powered fo- super fun? 
Never more so than when Seagal has a epic night fight with Tommy Lee Jones. That does sound like a fair fight. No, uh, Tommy Lee Jones would just be kicking him in the chin like he did in Men in Black 2. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. Um, Stick Seagal was never really much of a a favorite of mine, but yeah, you have to. Yeah, I, I, you have to suck to lose to him, but uh, Tommy yeah. Lee Jones. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, people like Steven Seagal, they, he has his fan base. I mean, everybody's got their own action hero, movie star. I mean, they got Steven Seagal, some people like Bruce Willis, some people like Schwarzenegger, Stallone, you know. But when it comes to Under Siege, they had to do a sequel. And guess where they do the sequel at? Mm, on a boat? That's, that was the first film, so why would you reiterate the first film again? On a yacht. Oh, sort of the same premise as a boat, but it just, it's just—it's got to go somewhere else, like somewhere on land, maybe. On a mm. Land Rover. <laughs> I, on a three-wheeler. Under Siege Two, Dark Territory, takes place on a train. Oh. I mean, I don't get how Steven Seagal gets from being a cook on a boat and being on a train now. It just, it threw me off. And Katherine Heigl is in this movie as the annoying niece. Uh, and thus was born the Heigl. Indeed. I, I don't know what, I, there's nothing else, there's nothing else to say about that, but... Um, if you really want a movie to watch, uh, which one I was going to talk about? Oh, let's see, wait, wait, I'm going to talk and see if I missed any, if I want to mention any, because there's, there's 20 on the list here, and then you, you're not going to mention them all. I mean, Top of the World, Die Hard in a Casino with Peter Weller, Dennis Hopper as the, uh, uh, bad guy. Then you got Icebreaker. It takes place at a ski resort. It's got uh, Sean Ast Aston as the hero. What? Aston? Or here's another one. Here's another one. Masterminds, where apparently Patrick Stewart is the bad guy in this. Oh, in a school? Huh. Yeah. Hmm. It's Die Hard in. A school. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, there's another one. Yeah. One that I could think of. There's another one that's at, at a school and it's called Toy Soldiers. It's it's Die Hard at a boarding school. And um, another one with Sean Astin in it. Weird. Goonie. Well, of course, Will Wheaton's in here, too, as well as, as a buddy. Like, hey, let's get, get this guy out of our boarding school. Yeah, and yet who, Patrick uh... Stewart still comes up. Shut up, Horsey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, how did these Star Trek Next Generation cast members end up in diehard clones? <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, we can also talk about Air Force One, which is diehard at a at Air Force One with Harrison Ford. It features a line. Which I... It features a line from Harrison Ford. Get off my plane. Which I have the movie right here. Really? Uh, yeah, oh my. Apparently Harrison Ford is the president in this. So this is another... Yeah, it's kind of like White like, House uh, Down and, and Olympus Has Fallen, yeah. But it's at Air Force One, not the White House. Oh, uh, wait, scratch oh, wait, that. I I... Um, I'm looking at Patriot <laughs> Games. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I got a copy right here. Oh, wait, it's Patriot Games. Shit. 
Oh wait, I just got another one. Oh no, wait, it's snakes on the plane. Never mind. <laughs> oh no, wait, it's the Jack Ryan collection. Never mind. <laughs> oh no, wait, it's it's the Klopman diamond. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> now we just turned this into a bloody Garfield and Friends episode. Yes. Okay. Here's one of the fun. Here's here's one I kind of want to see, and I was gonna watch it on Netflix, but they took it off instant quo, so I have to get it on DVD. But it's Sudden Death, and it features Jean Claude Van Damme. It's Die Hard in a sports stadium. I think I don't know. Actually, well, let me see. It's, I think it's in a hockey stadium. If I'm not mistaken. Hey, let me see. It's none. Of, it's none of the. Uh... Number ten on the list. Well, there's sudden death. Where it's die hard in a sports stadium. Yep, it is. It is at a. It's at a hockey rink. Oh, <laughs> uh, yep. And if you thought ice hockey was violent, well, you ought to know Canada. Yeah, this is like. If. Uh, if you thought ice hockey was violent, it gets a whole lot bloodier in this vicious slice of Van Damage. <laughs> Van Damage? Oh my god. They actually use a pun. Packed to the rifters with sporting metaphors, like Terror just went into uh, overtime. <laughs> and, um, and I'm all, just focused on the best scene. All matter... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and all a matter of crotch punching and sport splits kicking. Best scene: Sean Claude Van Damme fights a man dressed as a giant penguin. <laughs> what? No, does that... This is for Billy Madison. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Don't you want to see the movie alone with that scene in your mind? It's like I gotta see Jean Claude Van Damme. Kick the living shit out of a man dressed as a penguin. (laughs) (laughs) Screw you, penguin. I know what you did to Billy Madison. You ain't doing that crap to me. (laughs) You go back making out with Chris Farley. (laughs) Bring it, happy feet. (laughs) Oh, gosh. All right, let me. Uh, uh, I think there's a couple more. Let's dance, mumbles. <laughs> um. God, wait, wait, wait. Let me see. See if I'm missing anything. Cause, oh, oh, of course, of course. No contest. It's Die Hard at a beauty pageant. Which number is that? Number eighteen. Really low on the list. Oh, Way in the top. One of the more crappy ones they put in. Yeah, the one, the quote worst ones. Um, mm-hmm. That's what they should have done with Miss Congeniality, I think. I mean, come on, you had Sandra Bullock. <laughs> Is that a tired thing? Really? No. Who's being sarcastic? You can't, you can't seem I to said, understand scar, scar, sarcasm. Wow. I can't talk tonight. Wow, that's the second time I did that. He can understand sarcasm as well as I can understand him saying snakes on a plane, apparently. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, Pretty much. Other than that, mm-hmm. I would like to mention the quote best die hard clone to be ever made in oh, the yes. world and everybody knows it it's number one on the list here according to IGN and, and I, I think we talked about this before I'm I'm not 100% sure but we might have talked about it let me just bring it up and see if we mentioned it before the movie I'm talking about is Speed which is die hard on a bus Mm-hmm. Starting Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock. Speed of Sandra Bullock. Fun uh, fact about this film. Huh? Would you like Speaking to know how Andy? they... Would you like to know how they 
how they pitched this movie. Would you like to know how what they said? What exactly? Like the words it's that Die Hard on a bus. It's Die Hard on a bus. <laughs> That's exactly what they said. I shit you not. <laughs> okay, 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 guys. Yes. All right, all right. It's 1994. Okay, get that in your mind. Hey guys, I got a great idea for a film. Wait, wait. Now get this. This film is called Speed, and it's Die Hard on a bus. What do you think? What do you think? Should we make it or not? Got to start Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock. It's got wait, Dennis wait, Hopper. We can't do the Bill and Ted guy. Come on, he's he's uh, he's yesterday's news. Oh man. Last time I. Last oh, time man. I saw him in anything was that crappy Babes in Toyland movie. He can't run an action movie. No, no, you, no he's he's good, man. You just got to believe in him. I mean, screw the Babes in Toyland and screw the Bill and Ted franchise. That's old news, man. I know. <laughs> he's... They said that about Bruce Willis. And look at him now. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, this is a great movie. I mean, there's a bomb on a bus. And once the bus goes 50 miles an hour, the bomb is armed. If it drives below 50, it blows up. What do you do? I mean, what do you do? Oh, Our you budget is literally follow- just on gas for a bus. <laughs> It'll be perfect. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean... This is a... Uh, I, I, just in preparation for this, I did end up watching this movie. And I gotta say, I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, yeah. I was glad to have seen mm-hmm. it. Oh, that's good. And mm-hmm. and the last point, at least for now, that I want to bring up, uh, it's ironic that they should pitch this as Die Hard on a Bus, because look who directed it. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Shoot. Let me look this up in Wiki. Look at this. Wait, let me get this down. Wait. Who? Wait, who is this? What did he do? Jan de Bont. What did he do before? Oh, he did a crap load, but what? He He was was a cinematographer for, for, for Die Hard. For Die Hard. No shit. Oh my mm. gosh. That is genius. That's clever. Oh my gosh. That's freaking brilliant, isn't it? That is. I mean, he had his ideas, and my god. Wow. I just threw. Wow. Wow. You just uh, you just blew my mind. You just got your mind blown by moi. Congratulations, you're welcome, and all that. Well, it kind of makes sense. I mean, the guy knows. He would know like what that part looks like, you know? Exactly, exactly. That's the the greatest genius idea ever. I mean. You gotta get if you have a Die Hard clone, you might as well get somebody who actually worked on Die Hard to direct it or produce it or whatever. It's oh my god. He also did Leonard Part Six. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, he's God. We can. He has done some outrageous. Wait, and did... Cujo. Cinemata- but... Yeah, his cinematography was really good, but yeah, I mean. If you're going to watch a Dyer clone, Speed is the one to go to. Yeah, it's just a shame. I think that and probably Twister are the better two of his films. After that, uh, Jan de Bont just... Oh, God, please stop making movies. Well, yeah, he's only directed one, two, three, four, five, six films. Exactly. And I well, I haven't seen Speed Two Cruise Control. I have seen The Haunting, Lara Croft, and I don't know about Five Minutes to Live. Really, guys? Uh, yeah, that was the fallout point. 
that really was the haunting. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, Five Minutes Lived, it didn't uh, really come out, apparently. It's just a remake of a, uh, a 61 film starring Johnny Cash. But, uh, yeah, uh, there was a sequel uh, to Speed, and he, he directed it again. And it's pretty much Die Hard. There are several sequels to Speed. Yeah, one sequel was produ- uh, made out of Speed because it, it was such a hit back then. I mean, it was like the hugest thing, and they made a sequel, and it does not star Keanu Reeves. He did not participate in the sequel. Sandra Bullock comes back from the first film. The director came back to direct this one, and um, uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't watch the sequel. I mean... It's it's Die Hard on a Boat. And actually, I think I was reading that John McTierman, the director of Die Hard and Die Hard 3, had the concept of Die Hard on a Boat at one time. He, the, like, somebody pitched it to him, and he's like, no, I'm not doing Die Hard on a Boat. So somebody else had to do <laughs> that. And then it had to be his cinematographer. Yeah. I, I mean, sure, okay, so what the heck's the pitch for this one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, once again, it's Die Hard on a Boat. Yeah, I, uh, I have nothing against this so far. I just, the only problem I have with this is just looking at the, the guy next to Sandra Bullock on the front cover and saying... Wow, give me Keanu Reeves. <laughs> yeah, give me Keanu Reeves back, cause Jason Patrick. <laughs> um, yeah, he. Yeah, he wasn't that great. Hmm. Um. Yeah. I mean. Sp- I mean. That's. If you're going to watch a Die Hard clone, Speed is the film to watch. I guarantee you'll have a fun time. James said he did. I mean, nobody's no no Die Hard clone's going to top Speed because it's on a bus. So, with that, we pretty much covered every length of the Die Hard clone. Which one is your favorite Dire Clone? Please leave a comment below. And, you know, come up with your own crazy kooky combination for a Die Hard film, Dire Clone. Like, maybe Die Hard in Canada, Die Hard in Disneyland. Whatever you want, think about it in the comments below. <laughs> how about, uh... How about, uh... Die Hard at a comedy club? Oh, that could be interesting. I mean, yeah, that, that anything could be possible. Um, so you want? Uh, I mean, you want a, an action film with bicycle criticism? On a bicycle? How <laughs> <laughs> is was it? Just one of those two seater bicycles? A, a guy hops on your bike, like, hey, stick him up, or else I'll shoot. No, 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 no. He, yeah, he's, he's surgically attached to the bicycle, and if his heart rate drops below a certain point, he'll, he'll have a heart attack. I'll go with the speed route. Oh, oh. So we've gone. Oh no. So now we've gone with crank. Oh god. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so also leave it in the comments below if you're watching this. If you're ever gonna go see Nonstop with Liam Neeson, the newest movie in the Die Hard Clone saga. Hmm. 
Um, next time on Cinema Royale, it's going to be a very special impromptu episode. It's something I wanted to do since I started the podcast. We're going to do a Oscars episode. We're going to react to the 2014 Oscars that's going to be coming out next week, Sunday. We're going to predict um, what's going to win, what who might win. And after the Oscars, we'll come back and we'll actually react to the Oscars and see if our predictions are right. All right. So, thanks for listening to Cinema Royale. I am out of bubblegum. I need to get some more bubblegum now. I am Mike saying goodnight and watch speed. (laughs) Uh, Ciao for now. See you later, dudes.